Welcome to Fur Road Christian Church. I hope you guys had a great week. I mentioned last week that I was going to be going to camp with our fifth and sixth graders, and uh, I'm I'm here today, so I I, I survived, and uh, we had a we had a fun week, didn't we, Samuel? Fun stuff. Yep. So the the times that I had fun and laughed at them far outweighed the times that I wanted to strangle them. So that's that's good, right? No. So. Yeah, here's a couple pictures of this is with me and Sierra, and she was shooting, and there's Oni, and and of course Chicago Cubs, you can't <laughs> miss that. This is our family group, we'd, we'd have times where we would just discuss together and have fun together. Um, I did want to tell you the, the, the worst part of the week, and uh, so we were playing this game called Nukem in the swimming pool. And you guys know what that is? Where instead of a regular volleyball, you take a ball and you throw it over and you try to have it drop on, you know, without them catching it. And whoever's closest to the ball and doesn't catch it has to, to go out. And so we were playing that. And I mean, I was doing pretty good, really. I was diving and catching the ball everywhere and things were going great. And then I hear this, this kid, actually Sarah told me about it. I didn't hear him, but Sarah said, the kid said, Hey, keep it away from the grandpa over there. It's not even funny. So I went over and held the kid under until the bubble stopped. No. But it was a great week, so I'm gl- so glad I went. Um, we're in week two of our, our series on, on uh, the book of Second Timothy and called Finish Line Faith. Last week we talked about how... It, oh, we don't want to just finish our lives, but we want to finish well and, and just throughout our lives continue to, to be renewed in our faith and living for Christ. And, and, uh, and so we want to um, continue that kind of that idea throughout this series. Um, this morning, I want to ask the question, are you a, a big C Christian or a little C Christian? Okay, is it, yeah, I, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I want people to know, or is it... Uh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. You know that? No. We, we want excitement. We want, we want people to know we're Christians. And I feel like we, we live increasingly in a culture that says if you're going to be a Christian, you kind of need to keep it on the down low. It's, it's not like very politically correct to, to really say what you believe and, and you might offend someone and not everyone will agree with you. And, and, and I would contend that we need to be willing to stand up and say, hey, I, I'm a Christian. I'm proud of it. I, I love Jesus. And, and I want people to know that I love what he did for me. It's not something we need to, to hide or be ashamed of. It's not a political thing. It's not a judgmental thing. This is, this is just who I am, and I can't keep quiet about it. It just kind of oozes out of me. Okay? And so today we're going to kind of look at that idea that, that we should be proud of who we are in Christ, not ashamed of who we are in Christ. We want to be big C Christians, not little C Christians. And so our passage is from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 12, and And so let's go ahead and read that now. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or me or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald, an apostle, and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Timothy... He's talking to Timothy. Remember, this is Paul writing a letter to Timothy. Do not be ashamed. Okay? In fact, I'm calling you to be willing to to suffer like I have suffered. You know, sometimes I think it hurts American Christianity that we don't really have to pay a huge price 
in order to call ourselves Christians. Okay, there, there aren't a lot of, for most of us, a lot of huge costs to count. You know, costs today might be, you know, we have to give up some of our time or uh, we give up some of our money or, or somebody might accuse us of, of being a hypocrite or, or judgmental. Or, but we really don't face physical persecution like Paul and Timothy were, were facing. And so here in our passage, Paul gives Timothy an invitation to suffer. Okay, and once again, he says, rather join me in suffering. Paul, Paul was honest to Timothy about the cost that he might have to pay for following Jesus. And, you know, Paul knew because he, he had lived through that, uh, that. He was towards the end of his life now, and, and he knew it. But he, he had suffered in many ways. You know, if they would have had a, a, a punch card for when you go to jail, each time you get a punch, and at number 10 you get get out of jail free card, Paul would have had that. Right? We do it at restaurants. Paul had it for jail. And, and, and so you go along, and some people were kind of ashamed of, of Paul being in jail. You know, this doesn't look very good for, for Christianity. Maybe, Paul, you should kind of tone it down a little bit. And, you know, Paul's like, hey, no, this is, this is what it is. There was a pastor named Richard Wormbrand. And he was a pastor in Romania behind the Iron Curtain. He was arrested in 1948 and he was tortured for 14 years because of his faith in Christ. And in his book, Tortured for Christ, he wrote, It was strictly forbidden to preach to other prisoners. It was understood that whoever was caught doing this received a severe beating. But a number of us decided to pay the price for the privilege of preaching. So we accepted the terms. It was a deal. We preached and they beat us. We were happy preaching. They were happy beating us. So everyone was happy. (laughs) Can you imagine? What an incredible attitude. I mean, could you do that? I don't know. I don't know if I could do that or not. And then Wormbrand, he later founded the mission agency called Voice of the Martyrs. It's still going strong today. Kind of keeping track of the persecuted church around the world. Keeping people informed of that. But Wormbrand was a, a big C Christian. Paul never promised Timothy it would be easy, and, and he doesn't promise us that either. And so, so why? You know, in this he says, Timothy, you know, I'm calling you to suffer with me. Why should we be willing to suffer? Okay? You know, one of the things I've, I've noticed about kind of the millennial age group, the younger age group, is that they love jumping in and being a part of things and then serving, whether it's a, a Christian thing or not. Um, but they aren't going to do it just because it has always been done that way. Okay, that there needs to be a purpose for what they're doing. And, and that makes a lot of sense, right? You know, it, it's, it's the idea of, hey, if, if we're going to suffer for doing something, we better have a pretty good reason. And those millennials who have found Jesus have found a good reason. To, to suffer if they need to. And, and I'm so thankful for a, a great group of younger adults in our church who who have jumped in and just started serving and, and they're being big C Christians. And, and it's exciting. I love it. So, so Paul gives Timothy a couple good reasons why he should be willing to suffer. Verse 9 is, says, He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Okay? Reason number one, we should be willing to suffer. And really it's the, the only reason we need is jesus saved us okay he he saved us from what okay he saved us from ourselves he saved us from sin he he saved us from being separated from god for all eternity big stuff okay you guys have all heard about the the duck tragedy the duck boat tragedy this week in branson right and you know 17 out of the 31 passengers on the on the boat at table rock lake um died when the boat sank nine people from one family and 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 it was just a horrible horrible accident Um, and there were people you know you saw videos that were out in the water videoing the boat as it struggled in the water and they were helpless to do anything they just had to watch as that boat went down Um, they could not save them And, and i was thinking about that and thinking about the time when when jesus 
was in a boat with his disciples and they were in the water and and a a, a big storm came up. Remember this? And and the waves were huge and they were going over the side of the boat and the the disciples were getting scared. And, And remember what Jesus was doing? He was sleeping. How do you sleep through a storm like that? And finally, they came and said to Jesus, Jesus, wake up. Look, we're going to die. And you remember what Jesus said? He said, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. You know, that's what Jesus can do for us spiritually. He, He can save us. When we realize we are lost, Jesus says, you can be saved. It's a promise for everyone. And that's why we should be willing to suffer for him, because he has saved us. Second part of verse 9 says he called us to a holy life. Okay, so it's it's not one of those things where, okay, cool, Jesus saved me. Now I can do whatever I want. I'm saved, right? I can just live my life. Um, but think, of, think about how ungrateful that is. You know, God expects us to live life in a certain way, a life pleasing to Him, a life glorifying Him, a life of serving Him. And, you know, sometimes we think, oh, man, i got to give up so much. No, it, it's really the best life to live. You know, the, you, you think, you know, Christians, oh, they can't have any fun. No, it, it's just that there's an awesome feeling of of serving and you might have to make some sacrifices along the way but man it's not that big a deal when you think of the big picture so then why do we even have this opportunity to follow christ okay paul addresses that in that passage too okay he gives some reasons why we should be willing to suffer and then he talks about why this should even happen and uh, once again our passage says not because of anything we have done right not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Okay, not because of anything that we have done, but it says it, it, it's been a part of God's plan all along. Okay, when God created us, he created us with this ability to choose right and wrong. And, and I think God in His foreknowledge knew that we were going to choose the wrong thing. But, but He loves us so much as, in, as His creation that He had to, a plan to bring His children home. Okay, it's a beautiful plan. And you know, you read the, the parable of the lost son in Luke 15 every now and then because it's just, just that, that story of redemption of a father and a son. A son who was lost. And that's what God has done for us. It it was part of his plan. You know, as our kids get older, those of you who have kids, you you begin to give them a few more choices along the way. And and give them some more freedom. And you do that knowing that they're probably going to make some some wrong choices along the way, right? Okay? I mean, you guys didn't make any wrong choices when you were younger. but, But probably... Your kids did do and, and but you do you, you still do it. You know that. And when they make those wrong choices, you, you still love them. Right. You don't say, well, that's it. You're done. You're out. You, you continue to love them and welcome them back. And so that was that was God's plan. That's why we still can follow Jesus. Grace is another you know, reason that that we have the opportunity to, to follow Christ. God's grace is, you know, it's the word that describes it, the gift of salvation offered by God to us, even though we don't deserve it, right? Okay, God has has always had grace since the beginning of time, but, but it was through Jesus that when he came to earth that, that, that his grace was revealed to mankind. And so without God's grace... Okay, we have to to deal with God's wrath. And because of God's grace, we have the opportunity to follow Christ. And it's an amazing thing. Just like the song says, uh, God's grace, it really is amazing, right? And then it says, Jesus destroyed death and brought life. 
destroyed death and brought life. Physical death is is so hard, okay, for all of us. And and most of you have have lost someone who is close to you, a a family member or a friend, and it's hard. But because of Jesus, physical death is temporary for Christians because of what Jesus did on the cross. Isn't that awesome? 1 Corinthians 15 says that death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? It's it's talking about what what Jesus did to death. He he destroyed it. He swallowed it up. and, And we benefit from that. Okay. So I'm a Christian. And I want people to know that. I want to be a big C Christian. And what, what's that look like? Um, you know, there's not one way to proclaim that. That, you know, you have to do it this way. But I think there's some things that are um, better ways and not so good ways. Some things we need to think about. So, so let's start with some wrong ways to proclaim you're a Christian. First of all, is focus on being right. All the time, I just, you know, I am so right. I am right, and you're wrong, okay? And, and you need to know that, okay? How, how often does that work when you just m- make people know? And, I, you know, I've had to learn that over the years. There's been times when I've maybe run, won the battle, but I've lost the war. Because it's not like people say, oh, yeah, I am so wrong, you're so right, now I want to be a Christian. I, I've, never, I've never seen that happen that way. Maybe it has sometimes. Uh, for you, but I, I don't think that should be our focus on making sure that we're right and they're wrong. Uh, another thing is that doesn't work is to talk down to people. Okay, you know what, man, you're so dumb. How <laughs> how do you not know this? You know, and how how could you not be a Christian? What's the matter with you? And, and some people, uh, as Christians, they it's just like they kind of have this arrogance about them, uh, like their nose is in the air a little bit because I'm kind of higher than you because I've got this all figured out. So don't talk down to people. Um, another wrong way is to pro- to come across as being judgmental. Okay. Oh, you do that? Yeah, man, that's bad stuff. Or, uh, yeah, maybe you better not come to church yet because that, that's pretty bad. You know, it's that kind of attitude. That's what has turned a lot of people off to, to Christianity. It's just feeling judged. Um, so we need to, to keep, be aware of that. So how about some right ways to, to proclaim you're a Christian? One thing is to, to, to be all things to all people. Okay, Paul said, I've become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. So what's that mean? What's that look like? Well, some people, the way their mind works, that they need facts about christianity they, they want to see some proof you know some ideas um you know maybe it's archaeology or different you know things to show that the bible is true or and some people's minds work that way okay some people just need support i mean life is hard and, and they just need somebody to, to support them and and encourage them some people just need a friend Okay, some people need encouragement. Some, some people might just need help with life. Maybe it's a, a project at their house or, or they're just really struggling and, and they, just, they just need somebody t- to help them. Okay, so, so try to, to be all things to the, the people around you. And, and then develop relationships. I think this is huge. Okay, genuinely develop relationships, genuinely care about people, not just to have an agenda of this is my project, okay? Don't look at people as projects. Make friends with them. Uh, and, and, and I would say, ask yourself, if this person never became a Christian, would I still be their friend? And I think people need consent to that if they're, if they're just a project. And so uh, we need to to be able to reach out to those around us. And the, the problem with those of us who have been Christians for a long time, it starts to be where all, almost all our people, our friends are Christians. And, and so I think we need to continue to look for ways to, to be out there. You know, maybe it's making friends with somebody at work or, or uh, a parent 
on your kid's ball team or, or whatever. And, you know, try to take things to the next level in, in working with them. So develop relationships. And the third thing is, I, I do want to say, you, you stand by the truth of God's Word. Okay, this isn't about compromising truth. Um, but you can stand for truth in the right way. Okay, this uh, truth isn't taking the Bible and beating somebody on the head, right? Okay, that hurts. And, and so you, you want to show the love of Jesus through the Bible and the truth. Okay, sometimes you might have to have some hard conversations, but do it the right way. And then I, I would say there needs to be a steady dose of love. You know, I feel like I say some form of this almost every week, and uh, I do that unapologetically because it's so important. Um, you know, I, love is so important to our Christian faith. And I talked to this with our kids and our family group this week, but, and I'll keep saying it as long as I'm here. Keep giving people a steady dose of God's love. You can never go wrong with God's love. Okay, it makes a difference, guys. It really does. Now, as Paul wrote to Timothy, as he, as he wanted to encourage him, he, he also wanted to be very honest with him. And, and he was, he's kind of giving him a pep talk through this. But, you know, he, he wanted to know that this is going to be hard. And, and over the years, many people decided to abandon Paul in their faith. And and really, when they abandoned Paul, it wasn't just him. It was Christ they were turning their back on. And, and it wasn't just a few. In verse 15 of chapter 1, it says, You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Phygelus and Hermogenes. And, and Paul may have been exaggerating a bit to make his point here, but but many people decided it wasn't worth it. And at the end of the book, he talks about a man named Demas who deserted him. And, and he talks about a guy named Alex, the metal worker, who, who did great damage to the church. And, and so all kinds of people turn their back on Christ. And so I want to be honest with you guys. When, when you begin boldly proclaiming that you're a Christian, there probably will be some people that turn their backs on you too. Um, you know, you're just getting a little too fanatical about this Christian thing. You need to just kind of maybe calm it down a bit. You, you shouldn't talk so much about your faith. or You know, Christians are just kind of bad news. You know, where, where has Jesus really got you in, in your life? But in the big picture, you know, who cares what the world says? Our job is to live our lives as fully devoted followers of Jesus, the, our whole lives until we're no longer here on this earth to be big C Christians. And so I just ask you, are, are you proud to be a follower of Christ? Do you want other people to know about it or, or do you hide it sometimes? And there's, there's a verse that I wish really wasn't in the, the Bible, but it's one of those that's there and it's important. Um, in Luke 9, 26, Jesus said this, Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father. And of the holy angels. It's hard to hear that, isn't it? Paul's saying to Timothy, don't be ashamed of me and my chains, first of all. You know, like I said, so, some thought that, you know, maybe he should kind of calm things down. It's not good for Christianity to, to be getting arrested all the time. It didn't look good. Um, Paul says, no, don't, don't be ashamed of my chains. And don't be ashamed of who you are in Christ. And, and so I, I don't want us to, to just say, somebody asks you, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I am. And almost like we're, we're embarrassed by it. I want us to say, not, I'm a Christian. I'm proud of it. And, and I love Jesus. And He's so awesome. And, and He saved me. And He can save you too. You know, we, we talk about what we care about. And, and if I caught an eight-pound bass, I, I would find ways to bring that up in conversations. So how are you doing, Dan? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, I went fishing, 
caught an eight pound bass. But uh, you know, I would do that. Well, how's work going? What's going good? I went fishing the other day and caught an eight pound bass. <laughs> you know, you find ways to talk about the things that you want to talk about, right? And if we care so much about Jesus, we should find ways to talk about Jesus, don't you think? It should come up. We should find ways to, to talk about our Savior. We talk about what we care about. And so if you're a Christian, I want us to do a little something this morning. Uh, I want us to, to practice, to declare together this morning that I am a Christian. Okay, so uh, if you're willing and... With excitement, I'm going to count to three, and I would like everybody to say, I am a Christian, together. Sound good? All right. You ready? One, two, three. I am a Christian. Awesome. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three. I am a Christian. Exciting to hear that. Let's be big C Christians, not, not little C Christians. And so as the band comes forward and, and starts playing today, we're, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to lead right into communion in, in a couple minutes here. And I think it really ties into well to what we're talking about. And I want us to, to think about this question today as we get ready for the Lord's Supper. Okay. Here's the question. What, what if Jesus was ashamed of us? We talked about being ashamed of Jesus. What if Jesus came to this earth and, and he just saw how messed, thing, messed up things were and said, I, I, I'm out. I can't do this. These guys, they're too messed up. Beam me up, Scotty. Uh, take me home, God. What, what if Jesus said that? But he didn't, right? He didn't do that. And, and we think about different scriptures that I'm so thankful about. And lots, lots of times we focus on John 3.16. But the next verse kind of explains verse 16. It says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. He wasn't ashamed. He was ashamed of our sin, but he said, it's okay. I still love you enough to go to the cross for you. Jesus knew why he was here. And he was here for each of us, each of you here today. He was here for you. He was here to save the world. And he followed through with that by going to the cross and dying for our sins. And so I just want to take a few moments to just kind of consider that. Think about that question. What if Jesus had been so ashamed of us that he, he didn't go through with that? And let's be thankful for Jesus. So just spend a few moments with, with God and I'll pray here in a minute. you so much and we're so thankful for your love for us and I pray that, that as we go through our lives that we will be so excited to be called your children to be called Christians and that we'll be ready to declare that to the world and today as we we partake of the, the bread and the juice. We, we remember the sacrifice, the suffering that you went through on the cross for each of us. Thank you, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen.